Hi, today we are going to discuss bacterial cell A and P. And I have already drawn a bacterial cell on the paper. You can see it has three layers. And I have divided the paper into eights. We'll talk about eight different structures, including the nucleoid. And the nucleoid, I will go ahead and draw in here as a single circular strand of DNA. So this is a unique feature. It's not a nucleus, but it is a single circular chromosome in the cytoplasm. And where that is, is what we call the nucleoid. And when we think of the function of the nucleoid, I typically think of it as the instruction manual for the cell. So instruction manual for cell. Some people think of it like the blueprint of life, whatever you prefer, they all have the same meaning. Then we'll move on to the plasmid. And the plasmid also is made out of DNA. It's what I call a mini chromosome. Let's work in my pen work in here. A mini chromosome. But the difference between the nucleoid and the plasmid is this mini chromosome, which is also single circle, is much smaller. It is a strand of DNA or a circle of DNA that has non-essential genes found on it. Non-essential genes. And they're almost what I call luxury genes. Luxury genes. For instance, we do see genes for antibiotic resistance carried on plasmids, which is quite beneficial for bacteria not quite as beneficial for us when we're trying to harm or kill them. Moving on to ribosomes in orange, you remember that they are a 70S protein RNA complex. complex. And really, their function is as a protein production factory. So protein production factory or machine. So there is quite a bit of enzymatic function. So it's a big enzyme complex. For those ribosomes, since bacteria do not have membranous organelles. They will just be free floating in the cytoplasm and the nucleoid area as well, but throughout really. Go ahead and put that oops, there. And then onto the cytoplasm. That is really an aqueous gel-like solution that promotes chemical reactions. Promotes chemical reactions. Composed mostly of water. That's throughout the cell. However, there are also proteins and ions or salts in there as well. Moving down to the bottom structures, we'll get to this first inner layer, which is the cell membrane. And you'll recall that that is a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer with many embedded proteins, with embedded proteins. And the cell membrane in bacteria has a couple of different functions. 
one, it will be selectively permeable, selectively permeable, which means it regulates regulates what goes in and out of the cell. And secondly, an important function we see in the cell membrane of bacteria would be that there are ATP production machines. ATP production machines or enzymes. Machines, enzymes embedded in that cell membrane. Embedded. And that's what leads to the production of ATP. We see mitochondria also have the same sort of structure. All right, moving on to the cell wall. And probably I should label with a little arrow the cell membrane. Maybe I will go back here and blue before I forget. Cell membrane was that innermost layer, cell wall, second layer. And the cell wall, let me just write down the major function first. So it is rigid, rigid, strong support of cell, and sometimes so strong that it can help protect the cell. So rigid, strong support and protection of the cell. And with the cell wall and bacteria, there are really three major types of cell walls. We'll have gram positive cell walls, gram negative cell walls, and acid fast cell walls. And I'll just have a brief rundown of these. We'll go into more detail a little later on. All of these will have uh, what makes many of these cells very rigid and strong, which would be a substance known as peptidoglycan. And I'm going to try to squeeze that peptidoglycan in. This is going to get messy. Peptidoglycan, and I will abbreviate it as PG. So in gram positives, what we do see is there is a lot of PG, so a high amount of PG, many layers of what I call a chain link fence. And in gram negatives, there is just a very small layer of peptidoglycan, which means it's not going to be as protected from osmotic pressure as gram positives. In acid fast cell walls, usually there is a variable amount of peptidoglycan, let's say usually more than gram negatives, but not as much as a true gram positive. With gram positives, I have mentioned my four P's as gram positives, have many layers of peptidoglycan, that will mean in a gram stain, they will stain purple, that's my third P. And because of all of that peptidoglycan, they are sensitive to penicillin types of drugs. Versus gram negatives, low amount of PG. They also have a second outer membrane. That's quite unique. And in acid fast cell walls, what their differentiating factor is, is they have a waxy mycolic acid layer in their cell wall, which makes them extremely durable and hard to penetrate. One of the pathogens we worry about that's acid fast would be tuberculosis or TB very hard to treat and one of the reasons would be that waxy outer cell wall. All right, moving on to the glycocalyx. And in the glycocalyx, there will be two major types of glycocalyces. 
Uh, glyco really refers to sugar. It's almost like an outer sugar coat. Sugar coat. Although it does have peptides in there as well. And the two major types of glycocalyces will be one, the slime layer. And that's well named because it is made out of just slimy type of substance. And its use is very helpful in attaching to cells and surfaces. Cells and surfaces. It's one of the things that also protects organisms and is a major player in the development of biofilms. The second type of glycocalyx is going to be a capsule. And a capsule is different. Still made out of sugar, but this is thicker than our slime layer, thicker, more dense layer than the slime layer. And its main purpose will be for our class in the form of protection from phagocytosis by white blood cells. Phagocytosis by WBCs, my white blood cells. All right, one more category of structures, which would be the appendages. And I'm going to try to squeeze in three different appendages here. One will be these fimbriae that are attachment fimbriae. We'll see these all around the outside of the cell. They look like little hair-like structures. And I almost think of the fimbria like Velcro. So say Velcro to attach to cells and surfaces. And you can probably imagine that they are also going to be found in biofilms. So that slime layer, which acts like glue and fimbria, can really make it a challenge to try to fight in types of infections that have set up a biofilm. Second type of appendage is going to be a conjugation pilus. Conjugation pilus. And this one is a usually longer, will be hooked in, it's almost like a long tube. And it's a tube, straw-like tube, to transfer plasmids, to transfer plasmids, because bacteria really are quite generous in sharing those plasmids with each other. Last type of appendage. So I'm going to write a little line up here. Last type is going to be the flagellum or flagella. And just like in human cells, that's going to be used for movement or motility. And the flagellum, some cells will have just one flagellum. Others may have many. These little attachment fimbriae would go around the entire cell, but I'm not going to spend time doing that. But I will come back and mark that. Like okay, thanks. All right, these will be some of the major structures that you'll 